I've made this PCB in order to improve my multimeter project and in order for you to learn more. Because you see, this is just like a development board for learning Arduino very easy, especially for measuring stuff. It has two external ADCs, a current meter module, multiplexers, solid state relays, a full bridge rectifier, voltage dividers, an OLED screen and more. Also it works with an Arduino. So basically using this board, you can learn a lot more about Arduino programming, following my examples for each part, without having to solder very small components as for the small multimeter board. This development board is made to be used directly with modules, and just a few SMD components. So get my PCB design for free, check electronics.com for each example, and like that you can learn how to use it. You will increase your Arduino skills a lot. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. First of all, let's check the PCB and see what we need. And the PCB is just a simple square because it's just for development. It doesn't need a good shape. By the way, I've also made a design that uses only true whole components, so it will be easier for you to solder yourself if you don't want these small SMD components. So get the Gerber files from below and go to PCBWay.com. Now click order now and add the settings for the size, the amount of PCBs and the color. In my case I've used the green solder mask. Now add to cart and on the next page you upload the Gerber files. You place the order and in just a few days you receive the PCBs from PCBWay and you are ready to learn more. So different from my previous multimeter circuit, this PCB has two external ADCs and you'll see why. It still has the ACS 712 current meter, so we also need a module like this one. And to display the values we have an OLED screen with ice crusty communication. And compared with the previous schematic, the different part are these two blocks here on the schematic. Because you see for my previous multimeter, to change the modes we were using a rotor switch like this one, which was very big, or some sliding switches like these ones that have to be moved at the same time and that's not working that good. So if you want to implement an automatic mode switch, you need to use solid state relays. In this case the G3VM41D for the current mode and the AQW210 for the rest of the modes. And since the Arduino doesn't have enough pins, to control each of these relays we use a multiplexer, the 74HC4051. And for the rest of the modes we only need a few resistors, capacitors, a small operational amplifier and a full bridge rectifier. So now let's assemble everything and try some different modes. I first solder the small components such as the resistors and capacitors. And I don't add the rectifier for now and you will see why. Then I solder the solid state relays. And I also add the multiplexer. And soldering these components is not that difficult. And now I add some female pins for all the modules and the Arduino. The PCB can be supplied with 5 volts on these two pads, but we will use the USB connector for the tests. And the measuring probes will be connected on these other bigger pads. So now I add the Arduino and all the modules and the PCB is ready. And the reason that you see these small wires here is because I had a small mistake connection, which I've already fixed on the final schematic. Ok, so let's check what it could do. The first example is the OLED control. So download this example code from below and upload it to the Arduino. Make sure that you also download and install this library for the OLED screen. And this code will teach you how to use the OLED screen and print text on different sizes and different positions. So select the Arduino Nano board on the Arduino IDE, connect the Arduino to the USB cable and upload the code. And as you can see we can use the OLED screen. So check this code on electronos.com and learn how to use it. The next example is to read voltage. But as you can see the voltage block has these two resistors of 0 ohms. Basically if you short circuit these pads here on the PCB, we jump over the rectifier 
and that's because we first only measured DC voltage. And this rectifier might introduce some voltage drop and we don't want that for now. So I short circuit these pads with some solder. And as you can see the connections for the voltage mode are controlled with this multiplexer so we need to activate the MAX3 pin. So in the code I set all the MAX pins to low and the MAX3 to high using the multiplexer. And this multiplexer is controlled with 3 pins from the Arduino, the A3, D2 and D3. And this is the table that we need to set each output. So download this voltage read code from my website. And in this code remember to add the OLED library from before, but also the library for the ADS1115 external ADC, because we will use that to measure voltage with precision. And since we have two ADC modules, to have different I2C addresses, on the schematic, one module has the ADDR pin connected to ground and the other one has the ADDR pin connected to VCC. So one will have this I2C address and the other one will have this address. So in this code we use this ADC function to read the voltage between ADC0 and ADC1. And because the input has a voltage divider of 11, we multiply the voltage by 11 and we get the real voltage. And we have to set all the unused pins as inputs in order to have a high impedance and not affect the rest of the circuit. So upload this code and now let's test it out. I connect the power supply at the input and apply 5 volts for example. And then I try different values and as you can see the voltage value is the same as on the supply, so the voltage mode works. And the ADS1115 is capable of measuring negative voltages as well. So if you invert the probes, you can still measure the voltage, but it will appear as negative on the screen. And since the divider is of 11 and the ADC could take up to 5 volts, the maximum voltage that we could measure is around 50 volts DC. So the next example is for measuring resistance. For that we'll use this plug here with 3 resistors and a diode. So we need to activate this relay here for the RC pin by setting the max 2 to high. And then in the code we decide the range and according to that we set to low one of these pins, the 8, the 4 or the 5, in order to change the scale. And at the same time we also read the battery voltage of the multimeter with this block. That's why we need two external ADCs, because only 4 inputs was not enough. And we need to know the VCC voltage in order to calculate the resistance. So in the code we use once again the ADC and measure the VCC voltage. Then we measure the voltage over the resistance divider. And using the ohm law, we get a resistance value. And we print that value on the OLED display. I upload this code and we try some different resistance. Here is for example a 1K resistor. And this is a 10K one. So it works quite well. So read once again the tutorial on my website and using this development board you learn how it works. Now the inductance mode was the one that was facing some problems for the previous PCB. Because you see the inductance mode is using these two capacitors of one microfarad and is creating a resonating oscillation. On one side the capacitor is connected to the negative probe and on the other side to the coil that we want to measure. The problem with the previous board without the relays is that this pin here was shared with the rest of the resistance and capacitive modes. So as you can see on the previous schematic, this pin was called RLC. But now using the relays we can separate the RC from the L. Otherwise these capacitors would be connected to the other measuring blocks and that would change their values and we couldn't read correctly. But anyway for the code we apply a pulse to the LC tank and create the oscillations. We read the frequency of those oscillations with the pulse in function and using a simple formula and also knowing that the capacitance is of 2 microfarad, we get the inductance value. And we print that on the OLED display and test it out. I connect the 100 microhenries inductor and once again, it works great. So we can also measure inductance with this development board. Read more on electronics.com and also read the comments inside of each code to understand more. Now to measure capacitance is very easy. We use two resistors to charge and discharge this capacitor. And in the code we count the time it takes the capacitor to get to 63%. And then we calculate the capacitance value. 
you have more details about the 63% value on the tutorial that I have on electronics.com. So run the code and test it out. Here is for example a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Now this is just a 1 nanofarad capacitor. And finally a 47 microfarad capacitor, which will take a little bit longer to charge and discharge. But it works. Ok, so finally the current measurement is very easy. We disable these two relays and we activate this one. And this model could handle a little bit more current. And then in the code we measure the voltage from the ACS712 current meter. We apply the formula for the 5 amps model and we get the current value. We print that on the screen and test it out. I connect it to my power supply and I start applying some different current values. We have a small positive offset, but now all the main parts are working. But we could also measure frequency, diode mode, continuity, but that would be extra. Now I could make the final version of my two hand multimeter, and I think that would be an amazing project. A multimeter based on the Arduino and capable of measuring so many values. So, guys, get the PCB files and order it at PCBWay.com and start learning all these parts with help from my tutorials and codes on Electrooms.com. I hope this will help you to understand more how Arduino works. Thanks again and see you later, guys. So, guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended. I hope that you like it. And the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons. To you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below. Uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts. All this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.